What did I miss? Brian here, and it's morning, and it's sunny and bright outside. Got another 4 under video here. The hood is up because we're going to be changing out two things within the engine, and that is the pulley as well as the serpentine belt. This video is going to be a two-in-one. We're gonna be doing an engine mod as well as a maintenance procedure. But the main focus is the maintenance procedure. Going a little bit into both parts, I'm gonna start with the serpentine belt. Uh, when it comes to changing the serpentine belt, you're supposed to do it at every 90 to 100,000 miles. However, when I hit 100,000, I didn't change it. I kept it as is and the belt was running pretty strong. Currently, I'm sitting at 155,000 and in all honesty, I think I'm pushing it, so it's time to change the belt. However, there are some Toyotas out there that have reached 200 or even 300,000 miles with the original belt, which is pretty good. But I'm gonna play it safe. I'm gonna change it now rather than hold on to it and risk something happening down the road. This is the belt, that is the part number, and if you look within the packaging, there you go. One thing to keep in mind is that this is the old part number. Toyota actually has a new part number that replaced this one. So this in particular is gonna be hard to find, but finding the new part number these days is pretty easy. Now for the pulley, this one is not OEM, obviously. It's made by NST, which is also known as nonstop tuning. It's CNC aluminum and it's lightweight. This pulley in particular is for the water pump and if you see the four bolts that's where the clutch fan mounts and well you know what I'm gonna move closer to the engine bay for you guys. There we go so like I said this is the clutch fan and this black pulley here is the water pump pulley and we're gonna be changing it. Now why change the water pump pulley? Well in all honesty it's not necessary, you don't have to do it. I just figured since I'm changing the belt, the water pump pulley inside is gonna be exposed. So why not have a little bit of fun with it? I got it with another pulley and actually, in fact, I'm gonna grab both of these two parts and move off to the side. Here we are. So like I said, that's the serpentine belt, that's the water pump pulley, and right next to it is the alternator pulley that came along with it. However, I'm going to hold off on changing it. I'm going to keep it and wait until I change the alternator and put this on the new one, just to save myself from any extra work. And lastly, we've got a bag of nuts, four of them in fact, and these will be the replacement nuts holding in the water pump pulley as well as the clutch fan. Now what I'm gonna have to do is lift it, remove the bottom skid plates, remove the fan, fan shroud, coolant reservoir tank, radiator hoses on both sides, which means I'm also gonna have to drain the radiator, that way I can gain access to the belt as well as the water pump pulley. Now, I'm not going to be doing a coolant flush. I'm just draining what's in the radiator, making this as easy as possible. And that's about it. Now, you don't have to drain the radiator as well as remove the radiator hoses. You could just work under the hood as is. However, it makes working under the hood a little bit easier. And plus, I added an oil cooler, so I already made things difficult for myself. So it's kind of necessary to take those extra steps. I'm also going to remove the battery. Again, not necessary, you don't have to do it, but it makes working under the hood a little bit easier. For the tools, I used four different wrenches, which are a 10, 12, 13, and 14 millimeter wrenches, a socket wrench with a 10 and 12 millimeter socket, extensions, and pliers. As for other items, I used coolant, a bottle or a milk jug, a hose, and a spill-proof funnel. And like with any other car mod video, I never work alone. I got the crew back. Nice seeing you both again. First thing we're going to do is lift the front. Now that it's lifted, next we're going to remove the skid plates. One bolt. Two bolts. <laughs> Three bolts. <laughs> yeah, that's four. Yep, and that's four. Yeah, nice. 
All right, now we just remove the skid plate itself. There we go. Easy enough. Then getting under the truck, next we are going to drain the coolant from the radiator. So who wants some pink lemonade? No. <laughs> okay, now that all the coolant is out, the next thing I'm going to do is remove the battery. Again, this isn't necessary, but it will give us a lot more room to work under the hood. Now that the battery is removed, next we're going to remove the coolant reservoir tank, the fan shroud, and the fan simultaneously. There we go. And the reservoir tank is out. The bolt is out. This bolt is out as well. Okay, people, one thing I failed to mention is that you have to remove the front plastic piece. Now, some of the pins are missing and they popped off over time. So you have to pull off each one. In my case, I only have to pull off one. But for everyone else who's doing a belt job, you have to pull off all four. Okay, not sure what happened here, but for whatever reason, the GoPro decided to record the next few clips at a high speed and remove the sound. So for that plastic clip I mentioned, generally you need a special tool to remove it, but in my case, since the clip was already deteriorating, I didn't need any tools and it popped off instantly. However, to remove the nuts holding in the fan and the pulley, I used a 12mm wrench to remove them, and then from there, I was able to take out the fan and the fan shroud. Okay, now that the fan and the fan shroud have been removed, next we're going to remove the radiator hoses, both on the driver's side and the passenger's side. Okay, with the hoses out of the way, we've got plenty of room to work under the hood. Now it's just a matter of keeping track of where the belt goes. So taking a look at the belt, it's still in good shape, surprisingly. So I got both pulleys in my hands and the red NST pulley is not that much lighter than the OEM one. It's noticeable, but it's not drastic. That is clean. Oh yeah, baby. Oh, that feels nice, especially the other side, look at that. Ooh. Seeing where the water pump is, that is where the new water pump pulley will sit. I'm going to secure it with two nuts for now. That way it'd be easier to put the belt on. And once the belt is on, I'm going to remove them both. Just like that. Nice. There it goes. Hey. That was quick. Nice. Okay, we got the belt on. It's seated properly. And from what it looks like, there are no misalignments, but we're gonna keep checking just to make sure. But so far, everything looks good. Now we're going to put back in the fan shroud and the clutch fan. got the fan shroud and the fan in and I've got one of the nuts securing the fan. I'm going to be using a new set of nuts. However, these are a little bit wider than the previous ones. The previous ones required a 12 millimeter wrench. These will require a 13 millimeter wrench. The new nuts are in. Now 
We are just tightening up the fan shroud. You already took care of this side. Thank you very much. And you took care of that side as well. Now what we need to do is put back the coolant reservoir as well as the radiator hoses. <clears throat> okay, we got this one on. All right. in there real good coolant reservoir tank is in there as well as the radiator hoses now we need to drop it back down put in the battery and add new coolant but first we need to add the skid plate then we drop it down sadly the gopro died so we're going to use my iPhone, but it's time to pour coolant into the radiator. Don't drink this at home. Please don't. Please don't. And I'm going to pour it about up to there. Okay, I'm in the driver's seat. Key is in the ignition. What we want to do, turn off the AC, turn on the heat to full max, and then at the highest setting. That way the coolant is able to flow into the heater core. Here goes nothing. I'm gonna start off by looking at the belt as well as the pulley to make sure everything looks good and wow. That looks good. Most importantly, checking to make sure that coolant is circulating through the system with no problem and there are no air bubbles. And let me ask you both, does anything sound different about the engine? No. No? Okay, how about you, Christian? Does anything sound different? Sounds good. Sounds good? Okay. All right, and we want to check to make sure that there are no coolant leaks. I know earlier when we drained the coolant, I tightened back up that little valve, but I always want to check to make sure. So far, there are no coolant leaks, which is pretty good. I'm also checking the temperature and it's not spiking up to hot. However, it's been running for only a few minutes, but there are no check engine lights, which is pretty good. Since it's not spiking hot, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the heat. Well, first I'm gonna turn it down a bit. Yeah, that's fine. Turn it off and then turn off the engine. All right, since there are no air bubbles, what I'm going to do is plug up that funnel, open that cap, transfer the coolant over to the reservoir tank, and lift. Since it's not full, I'm gonna add a little bit more. Okay, reservoir is at full, everything is good. The new pulley and the belt is in. Thank you very much, Adam, and thank you very much, Christian. Greatly appreciate your help. Always. Okay, so it's been a couple weeks since I had the belt and the pulley changed. Usually I would just give an update after a few days, but I had to do some extensive testing. There is the water pump pulley as well as the belt we changed out. And if you look within the engine bay, you'll see there is the NST water pump pulley and the new belt, which is Toyota OEM. As part of this test, I did my normal commute from home to work and then back home for a week. And then the second week, I went to Fort Worth, Texas, which is where I have to be once a month for my work. So it's safe to say that the belt is properly secure and in place. There's no signs of any premature wear. It's not making any weird noises and the engine sounds like it's running normally. So that tells me that there are no misalignments. Idler pulleys and there's three of them. I, uh, I left them alone. They sounded normal, but I'm keeping a close ear on them in case if they happen to make any weird noises. The belt tensioner or the tensioner pulley, uh, it also seemed normal, but also keeping a close eye and a close ear on that just in case. 
Now, earlier in the video, I stated I failed to mention that you're supposed to remove this front plastic piece off in order to take out the fan shroud. And yes, you are supposed to because these plastic clips, uh, well, these are open holes, but these plastic clips like this one, they hold this plastic piece as well as the fan shroud together. So you have to remove it and then you can lift the fan shroud out. I failed to mention that, so just thought I should say it now. I also want to mention that each clip that is holding on this plastic piece is slowly deteriorating and falling off one by one. Early in the video, I had these three open holes and this was the only clip that was holding this plastic piece and the fan shroud together and I had to pull it out. Now, I got four open holes, but I kid you not, Earlier, as I was getting ready to record, I look over here and I see that I'm missing a plastic clip now. <laughs> so I'm going to replace each clip. I'm going to pick up the belt and move it off to the side for now. So starting off with the belt, usually you're supposed to change it at every 90 to 100,000 miles. However, I pushed my luck and made it to 150,000, which is pretty good. And for the most part, it looks all right. In all honesty, I probably could have used it for a little bit longer, but I didn't want to push my luck anymore and just wanted to change it immediately. One thing I did notice is that on the outside, it's extremely gritty, whereas with the Toyota OEM one I just installed, it's smooth. So this tells me that it's not OEM and possibly it's been changed before. One last thing to mention is I stated there are two different part numbers that could be used as the serpentine belt. The part that I used no longer exists and it's hard to find because there's a different part number that replaced it. I went to a Toyota dealership nearby and I got a quote for the new part number and they quoted me $93 just for that belt alone. And the belt that I have, I got it for $45 plus tax off of eBay and it was brand new as well. Now the listing does say timing belt, but it's a serpentine belt. So just know that with the 4th gen 4Runners with the V6 engine, you've got two different options. It just all depends on who is selling it and how much it costs. And then we've got the water pump pulley, and this is the OEM pulley. I cleaned it up and it's got a little bit of debris on it. Surprisingly, it still looks good, but I'm going to put it in storage. But like I said, it's not necessary to change the water pump pulley. I just figured why not have a little bit of fun with it and change it out. Not only that, I also got the alternator pulley, but I'm holding off on it. Now, is the NST pulley lighter? Yes, absolutely. Am I noticing a big difference? No. Am I noticing a small difference? Not at all. I don't really notice anything different about it, but it's got to make a difference in some way. Now, NST also does offer the lightweight crank pulley, and it's for the FJ Cruisers, Tacomas, and the 4Runners. However, I opted out on it because there's been rumors going around saying that the NST pulley will cause an oil leak and ruin your engine. For some people, it's been a hit or miss. Some people have experienced it, others have not. I didn't want to take any chances, so I just left the crank pulley alone. Now, as much as I want to change out the crank pulley because that's where you'll really notice the gains, at the same time, it's not worth taking that chance and having those problems down the line. So I'm keeping that OEM crank pulley for reliability purposes. But other than that, that is it for this video. This concludes the water pump pulley as well as the serpentine belt change on this 2006 Forerunner. If you're subscribed, thanks. If you're not, thanks for taking the time to watch this video. Take care, everyone. I'll catch you on the flip side.